One common type of virtual production is called mixed reality, and that's where we're filming a real actor in a virtual set. And the main thing that needs to happen to make this all work is that we take a real world camera and a virtual camera and we match them together as closely as possible. So we've covered this before, but if you want to match a camera's position or its orientation, like which way it's looking, you can simply use a Vive Tracker. But what do we do to track a real world lens? Hello and welcome to this virtual production vlog. My name is Matt Workman and that is what we're gonna be covering today. So we're trying to solve the problem of matching a real world lens like this in Unreal Engine. And as you can imagine, there are some pretty high-end solutions for this already that work really well, but they are expensive. It's expensive to make custom hardware, custom software. It's all really expensive. So what can we do at the indie level? So behind the scenes, I'm working on a couple different hardware partnerships and developments to try to make this possible, but I actually came up with an uber indie way to do that today, and it works, kind of. The solution I came up with, I'm calling the dual follow focus, dual vibe tracker setup. Now, this is probably the most like lo-fi way of going about it. It's possibly the most uh, inexpensive way, but it is a little bit wonky. Uh, you know, spoiler alert, I don't expect a lot of people to do this because I think we're gonna have better solutions in the future, but if you wanted to do it today, right now, and you want a system that actually works, well, that's what we're gonna be showing. So first I'm gonna go over the backstory and how this kind of all originated, and then I'm gonna go over the five steps I took to get this system to actually work the backstory. So I've been trying to figure out a lens encoding solution at an indie level for quite a while. Shout out, I gotta look at his name. Uh, probably gonna say it wrong, uh, Kiel Natali. Uh, he is a member of the Virtual Production Facebook group, which is linked down below. Uh, he, I think, not jokingly, but kind of, you know, loosely suggested that we put a Vive Tracker just directly onto a follow focus wheel, right? The follow focus is already changing the lens, and then the tracker, we could track that. And I was like, I immediately wrote back and I was like, that's a really good idea. I don't see why that wouldn't work. And so I thought about this for a little while and then it finally clicked in my head. I was like, what if we used two follow focuses? And so I already had one follow focus uh, and I went on Amazon and I bought like a $50 follow focus. There's a lot of like, really, really inexpensive follow focuses out there right now. So I bought two of those because I knew I was going to probably break one kind of like opening it up and stuff and I kind of did. <laughs> so step one was assembling the hardware and getting this to just like mechanically work. So the idea was to take a Manfrotto follow focus that I already had and stick that onto my Canon zoom lens. And for the record, a Canon EF still zoom lens is the hands down worst lens that you could possibly do this with, but I still got it to work. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. We had to put a lens gear on the actual lens. And then with the Manfrotto follow focus, we actually have mechanical hard stop. So I can set a hard stop mechanically for the minimum, a mechanical hard stop for the maximum focus distance. So we won't just infinitely spin the ring. That's the problem. We would lose calibration if the ring can just spin forever. So we kind of have like fake hard stops on the lens now. And then because I have a side plate for my Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2, <laughs> um, I was able to put another rod on the side like it was a Panavision camera. They have rods on the side, at least the old ones did. Uh, and then I was able to mount the second follow focus on the top. And so now when I spin the regular follow focus, it spins the second follow focus and I just plopped another Vive Tracker on the top. And that's it, that's the mechanic. So if you can pull that off with your camera wig, you're ready for step one. Step two was to get both Vive Trackers paired with Steam VR and getting them tracking in Unreal Engine. So if you haven't worked with the Vive Trackers yet, uh, don't throw away the dongle that's in the box like I did. You need those, you're gonna need two. You need a dongle, and which is basically an RF receiver per Vive Tracker. So I have two dongles plugged in to my computer and all you have to do is pair them in Steam VR, and I had to update both of them as well. Really easy consumer video game kind of stuff to do. And when it all works in Steam VR, when you turn them on, you will see both Boom Vive Trackers will show up. 
The next step is to get this up and running in Unreal Engine. So I'm building a blueprint. I'm actually building a whole framework for virtual production at an indie level myself. I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, so I started a new actor, a new blueprint, and I downloaded a 3D model of a Blackmagic uh, camera. I have the Vive Tracker 3D models from the HTC developer site, which I can talk about that later as well in, in another video and kind of prepping this yourself. And so I basically have it now so that both Vive Trackers are connected in Unreal Engine, they're tracked and they're placed, and you can actually see them in 3D in the way that they are in the real world. So this is really helpful for me. I'm a very visual person. I like to see like, is that where the trackers are relative to the camera? And so now I have a rig that does that for me. I can enter the offset of the Vive Tracker from the sensor, and that all works out pretty well. So Steam VR connected, Unreal Engine also connected now. Step three is to get the actual rotation data from the Focus Vive Tracker and be able to get that in a consistent way. So when we work in Unreal Engine and we have the Vive Tracker, you can basically just ask for its rotation. That's really easy, but that doesn't actually work 100% of the time in this case, because if you pan or tilt the camera, you're going to actually change the orientation of the Vive Tracker that's spinning, right? So this is spinning, but so is the camera and so is this. So it's a little bit messy. That will not work in this system. So what we actually have to do is take the Vive Tracker and delete or remove the rotation of the camera tracker's rotation. So we, we're gonna have something like this happen and we have to cancel out this rotation from this Vive Tracker and we only want the rotation on, in this case, in Unreal Engine, that's the Z axis. So once I got that up and running in Unreal Engine, I could pan and I could tilt the camera and I could still ask for, hey, what is the rotation of the Vive Tracker? And I called that in my blueprint, I called that the rotation value, right? And that value, I basically wanna map it zero to one, but in this case, I was keeping the actual raw data uh, to start with. I'm still spinning my hand. Step four was to map the rotation data to the lens rotation data or the focus distance. And this is called lens mapping. Now on a professional set, on a really big virtual production shoot, you are gonna super map all the lenses. And it's a pretty complicated and drawn out process. You have to map things like field of view, aperture, focus distance, distortion, chromatic aberration, entrance pupil, there's other things. And you don't just map it and it's like one value. You have to make a big matrix. And so you have to map it for every focal length if it's a zoom lens. You have to map it for every aperture and every focus distance. So you're taking all of those values and multiplying them together. That's how many times you have to map the lens, put them in a huge data table, and then interpolate correctly to the right data depending on where the lens is. So it's a, it's a big mouthful. Like I said, the high-end systems, they charge a lot of money because they've figured this out. They've mapped a lot of lenses. They have a system for it. It works, it's reliable. It's hard to do. So me at this like mega indie level, I'm not gonna try anything like that. And like I said, the Canon still lenses, you can't even really do it. It's not worth even trying. But the one thing I can do is one map for one focal length a couple distance marks, right? And that's all I did. This lens, again, is a still lens. It has like no witness marks. On a cinema lens, you would do a map of every single one of the uh, witness marks on the side. This lens, I'm, oh, I'm shooting, it's over there, but this is like a very similar lens. That lens over there has five witness marks. It's like 0.7 meters, one meter, 1.5, three, five, and then like infinity. So they, I guess six. So I basically uh, spin the lens, to 0.7 and I look at the uh, rotation value and I map it. Then I go to one, map that, 1.5, etc. Uh, and I make a map using an Unreal Engine curve and I interpolate back and forth. So when the lens is at uh, this rotation data, I just tell the camera to be at the looked up focus point. And that's like the very basics of lens mapping. It's a lot more complicated if you want to map distortion and you know UV distortion and a whole bunch of other stuff. But to start, right, we're staying very indie. This is like a very, I don't know if it's entry level, but it's, it's a basic look at virtual production. I was able to do it and it worked pretty well. Fifth and final step of this was of course to test it. So I take my new camera tracker class that has double Vive trackers and all the data being calculated and, and set up in a nice way that's accessible. And I brought that into my virtual production set that is like a kind of a spaceship right now. And it already has composure set up. I'm doing the live key 
Uh, and now I just re-rigged everything so now that my camera tracker sends the data to my CG camera layer. If you saw the composure tutorial, you'll know what that means. So now the camera tracker, which is being driven by two vibes, is handling camera position rotation, and now it's also feeding focus data. Things like sensor size and focal length, I just enter that manually directly into the camera. I have not encoded those things. I really don't need to for the stuff that I'm doing. So the test was to put the llama up, he's back there still, um, and focus to him at one meter. And then see, are we focused at one meter in Unreal Engine? And we were. And so the whole reason we do this is because controlling focus and racking focus, changing focus in shot is a very important cinematic tool. It's one of the most important ones. Unreal Engine looks really good out of focus, which it sounds funny, but other game engines and even older Unreal Engines, they didn't look good. It didn't look like how real lenses look. And that's what we're like trying to do in most cases. So what we can do is we can focus from the llama and we can focus to the background. And it looks like we're actually doing that. So I'm focusing maybe in this case to like a CG character and then I can focus back. And the lens in Unreal Engine is working very similar to the lens in the real world. So this is the whole point of doing this. This is so that the DP and the first AC or maybe the DP is pulling focus themselves they can actually just operate the camera like they normally would, make focus decisions like they would on set, do focus pulls, do racks, and they don't have to think about anything additional. They don't have to worry about, oh, what's it doing in Unreal Engine and blah, blah, blah. No, DP, you frame up, you move on a dolly, a crane, however you want, wireless follow focus, and you work like you normally do, and you use focus to set the tone, to tell the story. And we're doing this in mixed reality. So it's really kind of cool to, fo to rack focus for the first time I did it. Well, I've done it before, but this is the first time doing it on my studio. To rack focus from the llama to the CG character and back, it's like, wow. When you look through the monitor, you're like, I, I feel like I'm almost there. Like, and when you're shooting it and you feel immersed in it, like you feel like it's there, I think that gets you more into it. You get more creative. You can think of uh, more interesting shots, right? You're not just racking to like green screen and back and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. You feel like you're there. The audience will feel like they're there too because you're going to treat it that way. You're going to make decisions that are going to look good cinematically for the story to sell the product, etc. So the llama is like my de facto test subject because I have it. It doesn't require any people, but I also wanted to test uh, shooting an actual person and racking focus and testing the key and everything, make sure that it looks good uh, on an actual person, which is the most important part. So thank you again to my wife, Diana Levine, for helping us out with that. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. I think that there's still a little bit of a delay matching and some more tweaking that can be done to the system. But honestly, uh, as I'll tell you in the next part, uh, I'm, I'm not that concerned with it. So everything is up and running and conclusion time. Is this a good system and should you maybe try this out? I would say no. This has been kind of like a really fun experiment for me. I'm really anxious to get into lens encoding. And like I said, I have some much better solutions, I think, coming out. But you still have to go through the mapping. You're going to have to do a very similar process. You'll just have more consistent hardware. This is like the definition of a hack. It's really wonky. And most importantly, it's really fragile. Every time you change a lens, you're going to need to recalibrate this entire system. And to be honest, getting the follow focus to actually be on the lens so that it keeps the tracker on the top so it can be seen by the base stations, it's really dicey. You're gonna need a whole lot of MacGyver uh, camera rigs to even make that work. And to be honest, it's gonna slow things down so, so much. So like I said, I have some solutions that are coming out. I can't give dates or name partners yet, but I I'm working on it. I want this to work and I'm trying to get other people to help us build solutions. They're going to be coming when they happen. Uh, if you've watched this video, you'll just know it's like, oh, thank goodness we can do this so much better now. So I don't fully recommend this system to people uh, because there's going to be better things coming. But if you're anxious like me to just get focused at all, you just want to do it and you don't want to spend, you know, like super, ex you know, a ton of money on the high-end systems just yet, and you're okay getting another Vive Tracker, this does work today. It can work in certain situations. I mean, you can't like go crazy with it, um, but it does work, but I don't fully recommend it. I think we're going to have something better in the future. So that wraps it up for this virtual production vlog. Hope you enjoyed the journey of building this kind of like wonky dual follow focus <laughs> encoding system. I am personally happy that it works. I had fun building it. I learned an awful lot doing it uh, as a developer. 
And uh, this brings me to my next subject and final subject is that I'm starting to build a framework around this because every time I go into Unreal Engine, you don't want to set this up from scratch, right? Uh, I have now a blueprint that can handle that rig in tracking and has an offset built into it. And as I add more and more features to it, this is becoming like its own like mini Cine Tracer, but for virtual production in the engine. And there's things I need to do with the game mode and the player controller. And there's the ways that I like to personally control a virtual production set. And I am starting to package this now in a more serious way. And I'm going to be calling it for now, virtual production tools for Unreal Engine. So kind of, kind of a long name, but it's going to be basically a framework. Like I said, player controller, game mode, actors, characters, um, UIs, like little camera UIs and widgets to troubleshoot this and get it up and running. And it's for now going to just be for me and you'll see it develop over time. But in the future, if people are interested and they're working with Vives and indie stuff and some of the other systems we're going to integrate, uh, I'll probably eventually release it somehow. Not sure about that, no guarantee either, but I have started the project officially because for me to even keep doing these tests and talk to lights and talk to those things, it's just a lot of programming and, and little things to put together. I don't want to have to do that every time. I just want to load up virtual production tools. Good to go. So uh, the last thing I want to mention, as I always do, is if you want to continue this conversation, learn more, learn the specifics, join the Unreal Engine virtual production Facebook group. I run it and there is a lot of people in there now. There's people setting up their own LED walls if you want to see that. Lots of Vive trackers, lots of high-end trackers as well. People who are thinking of building hardware for this. Uh, manufacturers who already build hardware are like getting info and talking to each other. And it's, uh, it's growing pretty well. And thank you to everyone in there for giving me feedback. I post stuff constantly. I'm like the most spammy person, but it's my group, so I can do what I want. But uh, I'm not looking for internet fame or cloud or likes. What I actually want is feedback, real feedback and suggestions. Even if people are like, that's crappy. It does hurt my feelings at first, but it's like, that's crappy. You should do this. I'm like, oh, but that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. That's how this follow focus happened is the feedback. I put this stuff everywhere because I want to either get the attention of someone who can help us build it better or someone who might just give a comment that sparks an idea. And the more ideas, the better. Uh, up to a certain amount, <laughs> but but like I just want to get as much feedback as possible because solutions come from that data. I use the internet as sonar. I shoot it out and it comes back to me. And the more data that is good data uh, and that I can process, it makes better solutions. So that's the virtual production group. Come be my data. Get data from other people. That's about it. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video.